Well, hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Um, in the last video, I promised you a London video. So, London video you shall get, just not today. See, this idiot sandwich here managed to mess the audio completely with the action cam whilst I was recording in London, and I ended up with no sound whatsoever. So, I'll have to do a voiceover, but to do so, I need a microphone, because some of you may have noticed in the last video, the audio was pretty rubbish, and it probably still is anyway. So I've ordered a mic off Amazon, it should be delivered in the next couple of days, and then I'll be able to work on the video. So in the time being, I thought we'd do a very important video, which is all about composition. What a glorious day, seriously. I haven't seen the sunshine in about a week now. <laughs> it's been raining non-stop. So um, today, it's not a case of showing you um, like how to take a banging photo, because it's definitely not the purpose of the exercise but more to show you all about composition and how to frame your, your photos because I, I see more, more often than not people on the internet going I've got a really nice camera or I've got this phone, such phone, such phone and I can't take a picture for the life of me so it's not a case about what you have but how you use it and I've said that previously so yeah we're just um, heading towards uh, the city and if along the, the way I find a nice spot to, uh, to start talking about it then I'll show you Right, at the end of the day, there's not such a thing as a good or a bad photo. And, well, technically, I mean, yes, you know I mean, you could blur out the, the picture completely or you could overexpose it, underexpose it. But what I mean by that is, in terms of vision, in terms of creativity, uh, you know, if you, if you deem something is good enough and you like the picture, then that's your vision. So that'll be a good photo. So to help you to take better photos, though, you've got tools like the... the rule of thirds so it's a grid I'll put it on the screen it's basically a grid that allows you to balance and to kind of frame your your photos better but as we go around the city I'll show you more about how I take the photo what what the process is and what I kind of look for when I take a photo and hopefully that should make more sense so I just found an interesting kind of subject so if we look over the bridge you can see that there's a couple standing there in the light and that actually makes it quite a nice picture so what we'll do we we'll set obviously our phone to manual and what we'll do uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. so hang on so if I compose the picture on these people and then half press on it and then take the photo there we are so at the moment I'm on uh, ISO 100 because that's what during the daylight I set my ISO at and I just play with the shutter speed as you can see now if it gets either brighter or darker and because I want really to isolate these two guys here uh, in the photo and I'll uh, lower um, increase the exposure to a point where these guys kind of stand out and I'll frame the picture with the buildings on either side so I'll half press on the couple there with their dog and take the photo so yeah quite pleased with this one um, obviously we've got a couple just here with that sun kind of a sunshine going across and the building on the left hand side and the river on the right um, I'll pop all the pictures I take on the screen so you can see what it looks like after, after the edit so now when you're out and about and taking a photo and you see like let's say a building like this right so if we launch the photo, the photo app and we go to basic you'll be quite tempted to go I don't know if you can actually see it on the camera. Um, there you go, take a shot like this. There you go. And be happy with this, right? There's nothing wrong with it. But when we're talking about composition, it's adding depth, adding um, interesting things in the, in the photo. So now if you walk about two feet away, well, five feet away from here, you'll find a puddle on the floor there. And what you can actually do is take the same photo but with the building reflecting in a puddle. So if we go to manual mode now, so what you want to do is get as close as possible to the puddle without ruining your phone, obviously. And then if I take my picture now, it probably will try to focus on um, where the middle is at the moment, which is in the middle of my screen. But if I, let's try it first as a touch to focus, if it works, and we'll take the photo, we'll take the shot, and see what happens. If it's not in focus, then what you can do is manual focus because it tends to happen. I mean, it's quite sharp, but I could uh, manual focus on that. So I just walked past this, um, this wall here and I, I think that makes for quite a, an unusual and kind of uh, um, 
interesting shot. So I'll see if I can uh, get something out of this. So if we go into probably 85 mils on this one, and I'm going to try to get, uh, I don't know if you, can, you guys can see, Whoop. and I'm going to try to line someone up in the shot, and I, I reckon that's going to be quite interesting. Um, just the wall is, is quite plain, it's just a brick wall, but with that blue sign on there, it makes for quite a good shot. And I reckon if someone walks into the frame there, that's going to be really nice. Uh, it's just a matter of now waiting for someone because <laughs> there's never anyone walking past when you need them to walk past. It's also really worth it uh, changing the focal lengths of playing with your 16 mil, with your 85 mil, with your 24 mils, and, and finding what works. But always remember that you can also crop your shot. I mean, I remember a shot I took in London. <laughs> I didn't realize that I had my finger on the lens when I took it because it was really sunny. And um, it was, I think I shot it in portrait. Uh, I'll put it on the screen here. Um, <laughs> but I kind of salvaged it and it turned out to be an absolute banger the picture because when I cropped it I put it in landscape um, but yeah it's just a bad in mind so when you're out there taking photos always make sure you look out for leading lines so anything that will kind of lead the attention of the viewer from the outside of the photo into the, the middle to uh, for your subject or I don't know anything like textures patterns um, like these phone boxes over there so always try to take different angles so let's say well I don't want to get run over here I'm kind of middle of the road so you'd be quite tempted to take a picture like straight on like this you know let's say you know a couple of uh, phone boxes just here but what I do like to do with phone boxes is to find a kind of like a different frame so I don't know if you guys can see on the video here but let's have a look if we switch to manual mode, uh, right, let's have a look and try to find kind of like a frame for your photo using the lines of the phone box and the, uh, the glass on the other side and try to frame someone inside the shot and use the glass as a kind of like a double aperture, double uh, exposure sort of thing. So if we try now to take, let's say, let's try this way in landscape. And if we do maybe 85 mils, yeah, 85 mil works for me. So if now I focus, I don't know if you guys can see properly though. If I use the side of the boxes here to frame and here we go. Let's have a look. Did we get a shot or not? Well, that'll do for the uh, purpose of the video anyway but use the use the size of the basically using the sides of the the phone box and uh, the cracked glass behind it as well as the pub and you've got your subject in the middle it's kind of um it's different it's not something that you see every day in the corner here there's uh, barbers that I really like because just the, the way they situate it I'll pop a picture on the screen where you'll see like a previous photo that I've taken but I really like it because it gives you the opportunity to actually like, do a double exposure as well yeah the way it's located you get reflections of people walking past as well as the people inside and as well as the reflection of people in the mirror which is pretty sick so let's see if we can do something similar today Whoop. let's have a look Let's have a look if I do an 85 mil on this one, see if that works as well. There we go, with the bike going past. It's a bit of a shame. Let's see if we can take another one actually. I just don't want to put pressure on that bloke cutting the hair. <laughs> so, hang on, once he's out of the way. Yeah, so that's the shot that I got. Obviously, I didn't want to spend like five minutes in front of that window and put like, you know, getting those guys paranoid or anything. But that's the sort of shot that you can get by doing uh, double exposures and reflections. 
Yeah, it seems we're getting close to um, Christmas. I know they've done the decorations on the Royal Arcade. So let's see what they've done this year. Here we are. Yeah, cool. So I'm pretty sure we can get some, a uh, couple of uh, good shots here. So the first one we'll probably take uh, from here. And what we'll try to do, uh, 24 mils, is to add a bit of depth to the shot. So if we get close enough to the tree and focus on the actual bubble there, then it'll give you a nice bokeh kind of a blur at the back. So we're just gonna wait for someone to walk past. Uh, I'm just gonna compose my picture properly, see where I like my angle. Yeah, now it's just a matter of waiting for someone to uh, to walk into the frame to make the composition a bit more interesting. Cool, so the lady with the pink jacket just walked past. That looks pretty awesome. Just put another interesting shot here, the dress here. I reckon if we get the reflection in the window, like so, I don't know if you guys can see it all. Um, and we're just going to wait to look. Might have to increase the um, lower the shutter speed a bit and let's have a look. Yep, yeah, that's pretty nice. The reflection kind of uh, makes a shot here. Also, don't forget to look up. Um, <laughs> you can miss some banging shots if you just look right in front of you. So I don't know if you can see here, right, I'll try to put it on the camera, but that I reckon on a 16 mil focal length would be pretty cool. So let's see if I can get something. Yeah, that's a pretty cool shot. Um, just tells you that when you're taking photos, don't just look right in front of you on the side or left or the right or behind, but also look up. Um, there's also a picture that I've taken before. Let's see if we can uh, take that one actually. Um, that little cafe here, Marmalades. I've never been there, but that looks very nice. But if we take a wide angle from the ground here, let's have a look, 16 mil. And if we go down to the ground, just right here, let's have a look what we can get. So if we, um, if we lower the exposure a bit and go low enough to the ground, yeah, so 16 mils, ISO 100 and 60th of a second on the shutter speed. And if we tilt the camera a little bit, focus in the middle of the wall just here and take the shot. We'll take a couple just in case. We focus here, wait for people to move out of the way. Yep, yeah, nice. So that's 16 mil sweet because you can get like a nice perspective of the, the corner of the shop. What I like doing as well is walking through the little market, the little, um, covered market in Norwich and just take pictures of the stalls because some of them are quite nice especially if you happen to they happen to have customers in front it kind of makes for like a really interesting photo let's see what we can find Yeah, so I've just got a couple of shots there that stand out quite well, actually. Right, let's carry on. That's quite cool. Let's uh, drop, increase the exposure a little bit. Pretty cool, the colours here. What about this one here? That's pretty sick actually, this one. All oh, the clutter everywhere. That's pretty cool. Oh, that's nice as well. The moment I do. No, oh, come on, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me.
Nice. Do what? All these stalls are making me absolutely hungry. I'll have to stop and get something to eat because <laughs> I can't carry on like this. I need food function. Uh, oh, that's looking nice as well. That's nice. Lady looking at her list. What's she shopping for spices and stuff? Nice. Oh. That's a cool layout. Do you mind if I take a picture? Is that alright? Cheers. Cool. Cheers, mate. Nice. Right now, direction, the food, because I'm starving. Look at all these goodies. Right, food's been had, belly's full. Let's head into uh, Castle Mouse, it's a little shopping center. Uh, normally, I like wandering in there to see what, what I can find. That's quite cool. That little candy dispenser thingy. Let's see if we can get something out of that. So when we're talking about framing, actually, here, I don't know if you guys can see um, the screen on my phone, but that's quite a good framing here. Having the, the machines here in the foreground and try to get someone that walks past. Here we go. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. Look at the camera-ish, sort. Let's see if we can wait for someone else. Or another angle. So when you want to compose your photo, just look for any frame you can possibly find in the surroundings. So um, like earlier when we took the, the bubble gum machine, uh, that's a pretty good. Oh, actually, there's another one here. Hang on, let's have a look. If we do 100 for the second, 24 mil, and take a picture here, that could be quite interesting. So if we, I so probably on 200 because it's quite dark in here then we lower the shutter speed and if we take a picture let's do this let's focus on the lady here let's do an 85 mil come on and That's quite nice. Yeah, nice. That would also actually look sick, right? So we're just outside TK Maxx and obviously if you look down there, um, if we wait for someone to walk past there and try to frame the shot so as we can see both the escalator and downstairs there that'd be quite sick actually so I'm just gonna wait to see if I can get a shot so yeah I managed to uh, to get a shot in the end I mean it's not the shot of the century um, but it's still something it's just different isn't it you get a reflection on both sides of the escalator there and the person in the middle yeah happy with that can't believe how dark it gets and how quick it does get dark <laughs> Um, right, I think I'm just going to take probably a couple more shots um, and I'll be heading back home. What I want to show you as well is how to kind of separate your subject from the background and you can do that by uh, going into the burst, oh hello, into burst mode. So let's say if you do a panning shot, you're able to kind of have your subject in focus and then the rest, obviously the background will be kind of blurred out. So if we cross the street and try to take one of those shots, I'm just going to wait for a bus or a cyclist or interesting subject and then I'll show you what I mean by that. Right, so I'm now set, I'm now set in burst mode and all I'm going to do is just pan with the bus as it goes past, well actually this one. And let's 
Lisa Block. Yeah, managed to get, uh, obviously you'll see the picture, managed to get a guy there reading his newspaper. Uh, that's cool. Let's try something else. Did we get the bike in focus? That's all that matters. Yeah, cool. So yeah, so whilst you're doing a panning shot, just make sure that you've got your half, um, your half press on the subject. And as you move steadily without moving your arms, just kind of tilt and then you end up with something like this. So you can see the separation. So we've got a taxi right in front here. We've got the bike in focus and then the background is blurred out. So it's one way to kind of uh, do your composition. Uh, well, you can crop it afterwards. But yeah, it's one way to isolate your subject from the background and the foreground. And it gives uh, that kind of uh, interesting look to it, especially with the lights behind and uh, the cab right in front or the car i don't know cab car car i think um yeah quite pleased with this one as well so if you guys live like in a city or near a city near a town it's always worth going out there with your camera with your phone and experimenting like you know like we said with different foregrounds different backgrounds different techniques and trying to find patterns leading lines uh contrasty subjects and just experiment because the more you practice the better you'll get at it and when it gets darker as well it's a good um, opportunity to take shop front um what i find like little caps and little hairdressers look pretty good actually so let's see this one actually in front of us uh, let's give it a go. Mm, tch -tch -tch. ISO automatic for now. See what results I get. And probably a shutter speed of 60 is fine. Let's give it a go. Let's have a look. Whoop. Nice. Cool. And let's see if we can get someone in the frame as well. Whilst I take the photo. Uh, we do as a landscape. Well, the problem is no one is walking past now. <laughs> well, I think we got a good photo enough anyway. Uh, let's have a look. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, I'm quite happy with the shot. And the, the sides, obviously, they're darker, and that makes it kind of a, like a natural frame for your photo anyway. And when I do take the pictures, I kind of got the edit in mind anyway. So I'll probably raise the shadows on the sides. And uh, they'll come out pretty well, I reckon. I just found a puddle here, and I think that'd be pretty cool if we tried not to get run over for a start, but two in burst mode. Let's have a look. Oh, I don't know if you guys can see what I can see or not. Yes, yeah, so they're pretty cool. I just waited for a uh, cyclist to enter the frame. Um, shot this as a burst, so it'll be in JPEG rather than in RAW, but it's better than nothing. And yeah, we've got the cars nice and crisp. We've got the reflection of the puddle there. And yeah, and the cyclist. Perfect. Right, it's now 20 to 5 and I'm heading home. So I'll see you when I get back. Here we go. And just like that, we are back home. So um, straight off the bat, I can't be bothered to go in the office, turn all the lights on and everything, the, the studio light. Um, so I'll just do... I'll finish the video here, okay? I hope the light is not too harsh. I don't know, probably is. Let me grab a seat. Oh, am I even in frame? I don't know. Right, so I hope today's video has given you an insight of how I shoot my videos, uh, my videos, my, my photos. Um, it, it was never going to be a video where I'll shoot my best work, <laughs> because it definitely won't be, but it's more of a, the thought process, how I see something and I can turn it into something else. And I just want to help you guys, especially when you, you don't know where to start, you know. So my best advice to you is when you see a subject, you see, that's quite nice. But instead of taking it, well, actually, no, take the picture straight on like you normally would. But then after that, play with your focal lens. So your wide angle, your ultra wide, your zoom and try different angles. 
and you'll see that the more you do that, the more you get used to not to take that easy shot, the more you'll get absolutely stunning shots. And that's just because you'll get more experience and you'll know, you'll see in your head the final shot, if that makes sense, because when you take a picture, then you crop it, you edit it. But the more you take those pictures, those kind of pictures, then the more you get used to how it, the final product's gonna look like. So play with it, just literally, it's your phone, it's in your pocket, just get it out, click, 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 take a few shots and play with them afterwards in post, okay? The things to remember is when you compose, when you frame, to include obviously interesting subjects, obviously like your foreground, your background, how to isolate your, your subject from the background like we did with the, the burst shots, but also to include textures or leading lines that kind of lead to your subject and um, contrast as well. Don't forget the contrast. And when I say contrast, I don't mean the slider contrast, you know, that you get in Lightroom, <laughs> not that contrast, no. Um, contrasty subjects. So let's say, I don't know, um, someone on the street, like everyone's wearing grey or black and there's a lady walks past and she's wearing like a red dress. That's really contrasty. That's the sort of subject that you want to have in your, um, take pictures of. Um, contrast, situational contrast, what I call situational is, um, I don't know, poor, rich, let's say, I don't know, you've got a homeless guy, you're in London, you've got a homeless guy begging for money on the side of the road and you got, you know, the top boy, the golden boy, the city banker walks past completely ignoring the, the homeless person. And that is a nice shot. It shows a contrast, you know, but not just that sort of contrast. You've also got shadows and um, highlights. So again, it could be a case of a building is kind of like um, casting some long shadows on the, on the street. And that, that can be an interesting subject. I don't know. The sky's the limit here. Uh, when, when it comes to framing, composing your pictures, just look outside of the box. And actually, that's a, probably the best idea I can give you. Look outside the box. Take your picture straight on like you would, and then take a few more to see what you can get out of your subject. So I think that's it for me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, please smash the like button. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel helps me obviously as you know and um, that's pretty much it and yes next week you'll definitely get that London video that I promised you well that is if the mic comes in tomorrow um, but until then um, that's it thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one bye